But what a comeback for Charles Oliveira, Chuck. I was blown away by that performance because I think we also questioned whether or not he still had it. Yes, 100%. And it's funny because you mentioned the goal line for Darius. And I mean, part of the, I guess, part of the subtext of this whole setup was who's going to get a title shot? You know, is there is there a title in play? And it was sort of a cryptic lead in uh dana white wasn't being committed to either side although Darius himself was saying like you know that he's he had the word that he was going to get it it kind of added up a little bit against Darius for that very reason like you mentioned sauteropolis and those types of people who slip at that goal line i wanted to see in the sliding door sense if the goal line would have moved if Darius had won like just say that he had won a pedestrian you know, not not like a big time emphatic finish or anything, but where he just kind of ekes out on the scorecards, he gets by the fight. Would he have got that title shot anyway? I don't know. It's it's just one of those types of things. Um, but yeah, man, to your question, Charles Oliveira, and I I said this during his you know that torrid streak that he had going through guys like Chandler and Poirier and Gaethje back to back to back. Um, that it's hard to pick against a guy who just keeps showing up in these moments and doing it again and again. And not just beating him, but he finished all of those guys. You know what I mean? And yet, I'm picking, I, here I am. Pick, he loses a fight to Islam, and he, you go into his next one, and you start to think, I don't know, man. You know, maybe he doesn't have any more. Maybe, you know, he's kind of gotten to where he's going to go, and it's not going to be there. Sort of similar to what we were talking about with Nunes. And then he goes in there and does that performance tonight. That's such a tough out, too, man. Beating Benito Darius in that way is such a tough thing to do, and I think if because of the grappling stuff, I mean, it would have been a, it would have been a tough submission. But I think if I was going to pick how he would get that done, I would pick submission. I'd be like, well, he's going to finish him. Probably going to he's going to submit him. Um, but to get it done, with, you know, using his his punches and his strikes, and you know, doing it the way he did, I mean, it was just it's just impressive, man. I just felt like he showed up ready and explosive, and it does kind of... I, I wasn't sure that he could punch his ticket back into a title shot with Islam because they had they had fought. Um, it wasn't the... You know, I didn't think it was his greatest performance, but now, I mean, I feel like he they should... I feel like they should run that fight back now. You know what I mean? Like, that's the kind of performance it was. Do you agree, I PT? It, I mean, yeah. And I think the reason why I was doubting Olives here, Charlie Olives, is because... <laughs> Um, it's his 44th fight. You know, like at a certain time yeah. in combat sports, miles on the clock really kick you in the arse. And the fact that he can look so good in these situations tonight and dominate striking exchanges, like Benil Daryush has him in a bad situation, in the situation that he most wants to be in on top of Oliveira. He gets up and just puts him out. It's so impressive. And he looks reinvigorated after the loss again. I mean, this is a guy that we first saw come on the scene as a big, long 155-er that definitely didn't look like he belonged in the division. You know, this is a guy that, that you know, everybody was saying, like, oh, his division is 145. It's got to be 145. He goes down, comes back up, goes on this incredible run. And, yeah, he's right up there with uh, the best fighters we've seen in that weight class over the years, without a doubt. And he's one he's of the most so many popular rough fighters. Weight, weight cuts. Yeah. yeah. And even these look pretty rough. Um, yeah. If you look at the footage leading up to uh, this fight, but he's become one of the most popular fighters in the UFC. And and honestly, like I never saw this coming. No. Like Charles Oliveira no. was just sort of like a mid-tier kind of fight night fighter. And then all of a sudden just exploded. Like, you know, he, he bleached his hair, he fixed his teeth, he started dressing up a little bit and people just adore the guy. <laughs> Shout out to him speaking a little English. If he could keep that up, he'll, he'll be even more yeah. popular with the fans here in North America. They adored him I know, in, in Vancouver. I mean, he came across as a superstar, which was tremendous. And uh, and I agree, it's a no-brainer. You you run this back. You do it in, in, in Abu Dhabi, the scene of the crime for him last year, right? You could say like, oh, you know, I screwed up. I wasn't myself, this and that. Islam Khachev tweeted something um, that, you know, there's levels to this. There's levels, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and, and he just asked the people, you know, who's the man? Um, the only other option out there is waiting to see who wins between Gaethje and uh, Poirier, and that's on July 29th. Um, if Gaethje wins, I, I, I don't think there's more of a demand to see that fight than there. And, and it was a fun fight for what it was, but um, then the Oliveira fight. Can I, 
if Poirier wins, it makes it a little bit trickier. But I feel like they're going to lean towards Oliveira. Maybe I'm crazy. Can I ask you something though, man? Because you, I think you you just hit upon something that's a true mystery within our current times and the fight game with him. When did it happen? Because you know he he missed the weight. And I feel like this was a big moment for him in that Gaethje thing because you're like, what, man? You know, you're going to take away this guy's, um, his chance to, you know, be in this title situation for whatever whatever that was, whatever he missed by. And we had, what, 80,000 people in a live chat? Like, <laughs> we're sitting there talking. I mean, it felt like that was the moment. But it, it, it wasn't the moment that I think that he became huge, but it, it was like the moment I realized that he was huge it way bigger, uh, way bigger reception than I understood. I, do you remember the video when he went to um, Brazil? And I'm, I think it yeah. was the previous fight and the reception he got there. And I was like, "Wow, man, he is like a hero." Uh, you know the way that they were just kind of celebrating him like a parade almost, where he was going down the uh, the street or whatever. Mm-hmm. When do you think it happened? I mean, I'm just I look at that his run and it's weird. I just maybe I don't know if I pinpoint the moment, but maybe you know about it better than me. Yeah, like in 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 2017, he lost to Paul Felder, and then he beats you know Clay Guida, yeah. Christoph Jagos, Jim Miller, David Taymor, Nick Lentz, Jared Gordon, like kind of like the middle Just, of the pack. I feel like when he fought Kevin Lee in that empty arena in Brazil, yeah. when there was nothing going on at the beginning of the pandemic, there was a big spotlight on him, right? And then he comes back end of 2020 and beats Tony Ferguson in a high profile fight. That's the one that really put him over because Ferguson was coming off the Gaethje fight and still so. very popular and beloved, and that changed everything. And then from there, he goes to Chandler, and then he goes to Poirier and Gaethje. Now we're off to the uh, the races. So it's interesting because it feels it's more like it's all started there. Cumulative greatness and just you know wow factor. Whereas guys that we've had discussions in the past where you're like, well, they were they were kind of cast in a certain way, and then suddenly they became mega stars like the Jorge Masvidal's of the world. You know, you can pinpoint exactly as that happened. His the year he had in 2019, the whole you know the the Ben Askren effect and all of the things that happened. It's just easy. I, I this one's just you see other guys have crazy runs, and I don't feel like they they translate. It's so subtle how this has happened. Like what you're saying, it's it was a subtle build um, to this kind of hero thing that's going on, man. Because I wasn't surprised he got that reception. I actually felt like he would get a big reception there. Um, but it's kind of cool to see because there wasn't a definitive moment. You know, it's like I think it was literally a series of moments, and pretty soon people just really appreciated the guy. PT, you want to yeah. say something? Yeah, I, I think I think it was definitely the Tony fight because if you remember, Tony was coming off the loss, and everybody was like, "Oh, he's getting Tony at the wrong time." God yep. love Charlie Olives. He's not going to be able to get through That's this true. one on. Oh, it's the worst time he could be facing. Tony's going to be all this and all that. And then he just looked completely dominant against him. And then there was conversations about this is the guy that would beat Habib. This is the guy. If he was still around, Charlie Olives would destroy Habib Nurmagomedov. <laughs> and then, of course, the yeah. Islam fight happens. And people are like, well, this is basically the same thing. You know, that's over. We all started doubting him. I certainly did. I thought Darius was going to win tonight. Yeah, and, me too. Uh, yeah, he's still right there, man. He's still in the mix at the top of the division, and you gotta, you gotta think. Even though, if my memory serves me correct, correctly, Islam did really well in the striking exchanges against him. He just, he, you know, mm-hmm. it didn't look like the Oliveira we thought that would be, you know, swinging with reckless abandon, uh, trying to force situations, trying to force scrambles on the ground. We didn't see that guy, but there's certainly a part of me after watching tonight that says. I wonder if we get that guy if we did it again. Because he knows where he went wrong, surely, in the first fight. Um, And yeah, there's certainly appetite for me. And based on what I saw in Vancouver tonight in the crowd, he asked them who was the champ and they all went absolutely bonkers. You'd have to say there is a fair amount of interest in that from the MMA community in general. And there were some questions about him. Um, I did a IG Live on Thursday and Eddie Alvarez was in the comments and he was like, pick Dariush. Oliveira has too much money. Um, you know, we were wrong about Oliveira. We were wrong yeah. about Amanda Nunes. Um, and in case you're wondering what is next for Charles Oliveira, uh, Dana White, who often says he doesn't make these decisions on fight night, is making it. Uh, his quote at the post-fight press conference, which is happening as we speak, 
is as follows, quote, let's not play games. That fight makes sense. That's the fight that should happen, and I'm excited to see it again. He's referring to the Islam fight against Charles Oliveira. So it's it's going to be a rematch almost exactly a year to the day later in the same wow. city, in the same arena. It uh, looks like we're getting Islam versus uh, Charles too. And for Benil Dariush, it's, it's a weird one, right? Because he loses. He's not supremely popular. You would think he doesn't go all the way down the ladder, but like if Dustin Poirier wins, you would think that he could be next for the winner of that fight. Like I don't know how Benil. This this is a devastating loss. When you're yeah. popular, you can afford to have these losses. When you're just kind of there, like a Benil is, unfortunately, because he's a tremendous guy and a great role model and 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 the type of people you want in this sport. I I think it will need you know it will need to be a couple more wins for him to get back into this spot. Maybe you'll yeah. agree. Yes. Wins and maybe or circumstance, like something weird happens where he's available, sure. you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, Michael Chandler's going to be looking for an opponent soon, so. Ah. Uh, right soon. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Uh, <laughs> what do you call yourself? Blanche Tradamus? Blanche Tradamus. Yes, All right. right. Yeah. There he is again. There's something like, no, that's exactly it. Blanche Tradamus. <laughs>